has this little spring actually made my clutch lighter? Hello guys, welcome back to TSPEC TV. Today we're going to be installing a very simple and very small mod from LOF Clutches, the same company that supplied the new clutch for Nissa's Discovery 2 that we recently fitted in the gearbox swap video. But today we're going to be doing something much smaller and simpler. This clutch spring, which simply fits onto the clutch pedal of a TD5 300 TDI or Puma Defender. And it also includes these little rubber bushes and it should make the clutch 45% lighter uh, than the standard Land Rover clutch spring and is also available for just 20 pounds on LOF Clutch's website. So now we're gonna show you how to fit it. We have now just taken off the spring. We sit on pretty much all Land Rovers, which is a return spring that pulls the pedal back up again. Uh, remove that as a 13 mil bolt that sits underneath a little tiny metal thing here, you can just about get a, uh, a wrench in that way and then up onto it and then undo it. Uh, I'm going to take this little bracket off and we're going to put this guy back on once we are done. Uh, next job is putting the actual spring in itself, looks like this, and these were actually an option we think uh, from Land Rover, uh, which is why all the brackets and grooves are made for this kind of spring, but Luke went ahead and made an even more powerful spring, so the clutch actually gets lighter. Uh, but when putting this in, you want to get the pedal pressed down, because that is when the spring is not, you know, like used, uh, just sitting there. And once you let go of the spring, it uh, puts on tension onto the spring, which makes the pedal go down easier. Uh, so we had a chat with Luke and he said use if you are one man, use a bit of wood to push the pedal down uh, and that way it gets a bit easier to work with. But this is, you are going to use quite a lot of force, so watch out for your fingers. You're going to end up smashing them if you're not careful. Uh, but we're going to try and have a look and see what way is the easiest to put the spring back in. As I said before, we have the two mounting points here for the two legs of the, of the spring, where you get some uh, plastic bushings you're going to push through. Here, just to make sure it's not metal on metal contact and it makes it fit snug. Uh, just be careful you don't break these once you put it in. Uh, make sure you get all the way over this little lip here and into the hole. And we've got one more in here. Uh, one more bushing that sits into the kind of hook on the pedal itself uh, where this U joint sits into. We just fitted the, uh, the new spring to it. I'm just going to go over a quick how. I found it easiest way to do it. Uh, it was uh, quite hard as you're going to use a lot of force putting the spring in. Uh, we also spoke a couple of times with Luke, tried to figure out what the easiest way was. Um, we ended up using three pair of uh, mold grips. Three. I would recommend using the ones that got a, uh, a smaller beak, or what you could call like a very tight one, uh, compared to these big ones that we have got in the workshop right now. But we did it with these ones, so they can be used. I know you can get like a whole kit of them uh, in different sizes, so get one of those if you haven't got it. They're really useful. Uh, so what we did was putting all the bushings in, as we said, putting in the spring on the back, flipping it over, and then comes the fun part. We used a piece of wood that we depressed the spring with, or the, the pedal, and put it in between the seat box and the pedal itself, uh, because of course right now there really isn't a lot of force on the pedal. Uh, it's only out here, you have to push a bit and then it gets looser. So once that was pushed in, we actually used, I uh, used a chisel, big ass chisel, to put it in. Uh, just hitting one of the tabs, or connecting to one of the tabs and just pushing it in from out here. And when it was in, I could just about to get it stay still. And I pushed it all the way in with a screwdriver in between the pedal and the spring and then just kind of uh, moved it in. But be aware you don't crush the, uh, the bushings in there. Now, after that, we took a mole grip, applied it onto the end of the spring right in here. Put it onto that bit so that wouldn't pop out again. Once that was done, we then used another pair of mole grips to grab onto the other side and then simply just push with a lot of force. You really have to gonna trust, trust these uh, mold grips because you feel like if that's gonna grip you're gonna lose your whole hand by smashing it into the pedal. 
but grab onto it and push it all the way in and just tightly wiggle it about until you hit the hole and push it through. And again, we used a chisel or flathead screwdriver, push it in between the pedal and the spring itself and then just move it into, into the hole. After that, we put a big pair of uh, pliers onto each of these uh, brackets here and just push them together. That way the spring cannot accidentally fall out. So the million pound or I suppose 20 pound question is has this little spring actually made my clutch lighter? And the short answer is yes, it definitely has made a difference. And I must admit, when we were in the workshop having just installed it, and I was just pressing the clutch pedal up and down, I was a little bit skeptical about whether it had actually made a difference. But now that I'm out on the road and I've actually had it for a little while, uh, probably about a week or so, because I'm filming this a bit later, I've gotten a bit more used to it and I think I've sort of bedded it in a bit, if that makes sense, and it, it definitely has made a difference and it feels a lot nicer. And I don't really know how to describe this, but I almost feel like I can make kind of snappier or smoother gear changes, which sounds quite weird because firstly, I'm in a Defender, and secondly, we haven't changed the clutch or the gearbox or any, anything like that. But combined with the Synchro gearbox's slick shift, it makes for a really nice kind of smooth gear change, I would say. And I know there's going to be complaints from people, or comments at least down below, of, of people going on about how you should just get on with using the standard Land Rover clutch and I should stop being a wuss and if it's too heavy and, and whatever. And I was fine with the way the clutch was before, I had no problem with it. But LOF Clutches wanted us to try out their new product. And I can't lie, it is definitely lighter and there are people out there who want a lighter clutch and that's fine and why not it costs 20 quid and it's relatively easy to install I think the first time you do it it's a bit fiddly and uh, you just have to be be determined and have some perseverance and you'll get there you might scrape your knuckles a bit and uh, have to, to mention a few swear words but you'll get there eventually and once it's in it's fine it takes some getting used to I'll say that if at first you install it and you're a bit skeptical or it feels a bit funny then just give it a week or so of driving and you'll get used to it. I think it I, I don't know if I'm just talking a load of nonsense but I feel like it needs a bit of bedding in it felt quite stiff at first or had a bit of a like a recoil action to it, it could have sort of sprung back quite um, quite firmly but uh, now that I've had it for some time I would certainly say it is a, a massive improvement. There'll be a link down in the description below to where you can buy this very product. And other than that, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.